<laughs> no one is right on time after lunch, right? But there are dogs there. The dogs are, the dogs are there. Well, welcome back. I hope you all had a great lunch. The next talk. I think it's actually about how to build your work, WordPress site, right? No. No, thank God. <laughs> about fixing it? Uh, maybe. Well, Possibly. Just let him do the talk. He's much better at it than I am. So give a warm applause to Andre. Hello. Thank you for being here on time, <laughs> pun intended. Uh, so, and it involved a lot of time you being here. Like, I mean, like uh, planes and trains and schedules. And is your calendar open for this word camp? And if you, if you woke up on time, and if you remember to go to the talk on time, and I need to be on time in this time zone, not in my own time zone, which is an hour ahead. And the interesting thing about time, we don't talk about time as global cosmic concept, because from that point of view, it's kind of still a bit of a mystery. So if you say this talk was a waste of time, I can counter that from certain points of view, time does not exist. Uh, so we talk about time in a practical sense. We talk about measurement of time. And for measurement of time to really work, we need to be on the same page about it. You need same time on your watch, as it's on my watch, as it's on my computer, as it's on calendar, as it's in organizer schedule. It only works as far as we are all on the same time. And uh, as people involved with making off-site, uh, off sites we are not just consumers of time, we are also producers of time. Everything we put out there or enable other people to put out there generally has a time attached to it. And as all the things, it also needs to be part of the same measurement or things start to go not so well. So my name is Andrei Savchenko. You are more likely to know me as Rarus in WordPress circles and online. I am WordPress, I define myself as WordPress contractor and everyone immediately says, so is it like a freelancer? I'm like, yes and no. So my specialty is I work with other developers. I don't work with end clients. So I don't solve people's problems. I'm not too good at that. I solve problems of people who solve people's problems. <laughs> so I'm like once removed from humanity that works a little better for me. And the things I typically deal with are complex things and messy things. And a bit of a trivia, I am one billion seconds old. And I dealt with WordPress a little bit over 300 million seconds, and this will get funnier as talk goes on. And it took me a while to notice that WordPress is really not too good with time. So we trust it to deal with time for us. This is not part of usual publishing uh, like workflow. You tell it to publish it now, or you tell it to publish it tomorrow or you tell it to publish next noon, but you set it to next midnight, which is always happens, it's guaranteed. Uh, but generally we trust, we put a lot of trust in it to do a good job about time implicitly. And in many cases it doesn't. And you might ha not have noticed that. And uh, as I said, it took me a lot of time to notice and even more time to take it apart and figure out why of it. So let's do a same page check, like two questions. Does this talk actually matter for you? Had you ever changed WordPress time zone on any site you own or any site you've been involved with any time for any reason? Like mo more than half of people. So when you do this, you break time on every post before that point. As soon as you changed WordPress time zone in WordPress settings, every, po every post ever made on that site is now outputting incorrect time. So this is something that might be worrisome, right? 
had you ever output vocalized time in any way, shape, or form anywhere on WordPress site with functions like date, uh, date i18n, the date, any of them. So this is broken at least three major ways that will be covered in this talk and several more major ways that didn't make it in because they are not as easy to address. But essentially this process is also in a very, very not good shape. So let's go a bit back to the how we ended up with, we, w with what we have like from the earliest days. So where essentially our concept of time is practical and this practicality is rooted in our solar day. Like we're here at this moment because it's like acceptable concept of business time when the sun is up, when we're awake and no one would schedule this talk from middle of the night, right? And uh, as people were good at resolving this. So I went to a WordCamp last year and I looked at schedule and there was a small mistake. So one of the workshop was scheduled for three in the morning. It says on the schedule, 3 a.m. And I'm pretty sure no one showed up at that time because as people, we are very good at putting time information in context. So we kind of, yeah, we, we are grumpy about time zones, but in our daily life, we are mostly pretty good at this. And you know who is not good at it? Computers aren't. If you tell computers three in the morning, it will be waiting there three in the morning. It doesn't put it into the social context. It doesn't put it into solar context. Your computer or your web server doesn't care if the sun is up. Like if it can figure it out, if you really make it, but that's not something that like uh, CPU does just out of, you know, because that's the thing to do. So, and uh, as history of humanity progressed, uh, even when we started to agree how to measure time, even we agreed on things like how many hours, how many minutes in the hour, uh, it was uh, still very fragmented. So the time moved from being just solar to being a city time, which was uh, might not have exactly aligned with solar time, solar noon, but it was localized to a city. And you didn't much care what time is it next city over, right? If it takes you a day to get there, you don't really get, like uh, care that there are like 10 minutes incorrect from you so not at those speeds and for a while it went on and people had to like micro adjust in not so often cases when they traveled and this started to change with railroads because when railroads started connecting cities uh, the world got a lot more connected a lot faster and it was no longer practical to have this variance when the train goes through multiple cities in a day and every city does its own thing, then the schedule gets a little crazy. So way, way before the concept of time zones, uh, there was like pre predating it the concept of rail time and countries that uh, got heavily connected with railroads. So the first, th this process went through in England uh, with rail time being established and then process repeated it itself in United States as it got covered with railroads and more territory. They had like three rail time zones established in the country. And uh, even as concept was introduced, gradually everyone switched to it because with uh, increased standardization, it was increased convenience and increased reliability. We started to converge on same measure, not just in local area, but in larger and larger and larger area. And as world got more and more and more interconnected, first physically and later electronically, this led to establishment of time zone, which it quite amazes me that everyone actually agreed upon, like think about it, like what the other things that pretty much every country in the world agrees on universally. It's nearly unique that time zones were adopted that well because there were, it, it was necessity, it was necessity of time 
to converge on same measurement for it to be of any use to all of us. And uh, what we have to deal with now, it led to establishment of universal coordinated time, uh, UTC in short. And I've picked, I always wondered why, does it, why is it called universal coordinated time, but abbreviation is UTC. It doesn't follow the order of what its name actually is. So the story is when it was being like formulated and codified, the American and French had a fight about the abbreviation because Americans wanted to be abbreviation from English and French wanted to abbreviation from French. So they compromised on abbreviation that is neither English or French. <laughs> so UTC is as an abbreviation was made up to please neither side. Uh, and this is essentially the time that computers on the sort of like deepest, darkest level deal with. So how do computers see time? Uh, Unix time, you might be familiar, you might be not familiar, but uh, I would more likely to guess that at some point you saw this. It's a no Unix time is a number. And it's a number of seconds that had passed since since first uh, since midnight first of January 1970, and it was actually like established retroactively. So it was, uh, I think, introduced in 72, but they kind of went back and decided that's uh, going to be a starting point. And the enormous, like, an obvious advantage of this number is that it is global it doesn't fluctuate with time zone. This moment of time is same here as it's on the other side of the world, as it's on the moon, as it's on the Mars or wherever our like minions made it to. Uh, it's global and uh, not only people, but computers are in the same system. So it's called Unix time, but usually pretty much everything uses this now. Windows kind of does its own thing, but uh, here it's there. It, uh, it's most definitely aware of it and interoperab interoperable with it. So the things that define it, it's very consistent. It's storage friendly, it's one number. It's not a complicated sequence. It's, there is no question is the day before the month or after. It's just seconds. It's very computational friendly. It's very easy to compare to numbers. If you have two timestamps, it's trivial for a computer to tell. So this is earlier, this is later. It doesn't need to figure out, wait, was, this, was it in the summertime? There is no summertime. There is only seconds steadily ticking forward. But it's not really human readable. Like humans would not use this as is. You don't tell someone, I will call you back in 7,000 seconds. <laughs> so we're not worried for it. So our historical, con our historical context does not smoothly translate to a pile, a giant pile of seconds. So usually the systems we do deal with uh, need to introduce a layer of like human friendliness of being able to go smoothly operate in what computers want, but interact with people, take inputs from people and provide people with outputs that are what humans reasonably, that are reasonable for humans. So in PHP, this is a daytime component, which is a part of core. Uh, it's uh, most of, it's pretty large, but most of its, its functionality is a daytime object that represents a moment in time. And it operates internally in Unix time. And I think the modern PHP versions, uh, it, start, uh, it, started, uh, to, it started to write a lot on operating system. So it expected, it, it asked the operating system what the time is. But gradually this was moved over into PHP language itself. And it now provides very consistent platform for this over different operating systems. Uh, so it has a range of uh, minus 2.5 billion years to plus 2.5 billion years, which is enough for, for most typical use cases. 
and it's uh, it's capable of uh, formatting and outputting time in wide range uh, of formats on demand as well as reading time from wide range of formats and it operates with a number of time zones which are uh, not just offsets so it uh, puts uh, time zones not just by the hour but by location so if you do run this on a server let's say here uh, which preferably properly configured it will by default uh, assume time zone of euro berlin which not only knows how far it's away this time is from utc time but it also knows things like where is it located geographically it knows things like uh, is it summertime is in effect because at the moment it is and it has a historical record going backwards and forwards of all the changes so this is like immensely more flexible than just saying plus two hours uh, I went over this, uh, so it's based on UTC, it's good, very good for formatting and parsing, so for human friendly, and one downside that it's primarily engineered to work in English language. So there are extensions that build on top of it for localization, but out of the box, English is what you get. And there is a great book about it called Date and Time Programming, uh, written by Derek Rettens, who is author of uh, rather famous xdebug extensions for PHP. So it came out in 2009, nine years ago, but it is still too new for WordPress core to use because it covers up to PHP 5.3. So if uh, it might seem dated, but on WordPress scale, it's, uh, it's okay. So if you have a couple of free evenings, I highly recommend it because it goes over a lot of nuance uh, that you wouldn't normally encounter. And I hear second edition is in the works and I'm very much looking forward to that one. So let's talk about time in WordPress. So time in WordPress is on fire and like not in a good way. So the direction the priorities of wordpress in a project put this like a date time uh, what by which i don't mean date time in php i mean it's called date slash time component of wordpress core which like loosely groups all the functions and all the computations and all the related core core code that deal with time so it's not in a good shape and you know it's easy to pick on it because uh it's easy to pick on things. It is easy to hindsight, you know, is uh, universal, like makes everything like seem make us like the very smart person. But it's really kind of the history and priorities and things that made sense over a decade ago. And it all adds up to current situation. And it's unfortunate, but it is, uh, it's not something to pick on. It's something to face. It, it is something to be aware of. And it is something to fix in many cases. So daytime component is in core is not even PHP 5. It's literally PHP 4 code written before PHP 5 was even released. And it has been many parts of it had made like this journey through time and open source over a decade long. And because of backwards compatibility commitments, they are now extremely hard to work with and extremely hard to change. So some parts are, had been retrofit to PHP 5. Uh, so there were like uh, patches on top of the old code that try to provide better experience now. But the, because of backwards compatibility, the old code needs to keep working. So it is a building on a shaky foundation and uh, smart people made uh, great improvements and put effort into it. But that underlying foundation, it is still bleeding through in many cases. So, and especially the two main challenges is that WordPress is using custom time zone logic originally, since it did not, it, it, it would not even know that PHP 5 will eventually appear and solve these problems. So it had to write its own custom time zone logic from scratch. And that works, but not well. <laughs> 
And uh, WordPress uses custom internalization since uh, PHP didn't offer it to ability to output the NTNAM information. Is this all like amazing range of languages that WordPress can work with? Uh, WordPress had to evolve to internationalize to take some moment in time in and not just output in an English but output in a necessary locale. And while this is certainly a huge, huge benefit and something that we need, it also comes with the price of compatibility and bugs and backwards compatibility and so on. And I'm like, I'm getting to the scary parts. So, and this is, a, once I was in a endless loop of fixing things over and over again, so I wrote a small library uh, called WP Daytime, which is kind of is trying to be a middle ground. It's trying to like uh, make WordPress friends with PHP <laughs> on this topic, and uh, it doesn't succeed at everything, but uh, it's a place where I dump all the scary code, all the scary fixes. So I will not be dumping a lot of code on your heads today, but. Uh, uh, you know where to find it if you want to, or you can sleep tonight. That's your choice. <laughs> so let's start with time zones. So uh, WordPress has two not quite connected different time zone options. So the old one is GMT offset, and the new one is time zone string. And GMT offset is offset in hours, and time zone string is what PHP currently uses the description of continent and location. So, and in WordPress settings still, as of right now, you can still, if you pick a city, you're in a new mode. And if you pick an offset in settings, you're in old mode. And not all things works with both modes. So new mode is trying, it's trying to be backwards compatible. So if you have you, if you have Berlin set, the trying to get new option will get you Berlin and try and get your uh, old option will get you two, which is current offset, but it doesn't work other way. If you have UTC plus two, then you won't get uh, time zone string if you ask for it. You wouldn't know where you are. And just like cherry on top, it might return integer, it might enter string. Uh, I, I had I had caused a lot of bugs in because of that. <laughs> so how do you do that in all cases? So you always need to prefer times on string. And if you don't have access to it, then you get GMT offset. And preferably for the best compatibility with PHP, if you are forced to use offset, you convert it to this format like plus minus hours minutes and newer PHP version will understand that as time zone input. Even though it's not a location, but if you give it this and say, this is a time zone to use, it will get that. Unfortunately, not in old versions. So in old versions, you just are stuck with things broken. And WP Daytime uh, implements this. So if uh, there is a method to say, get me WordPress time zone, whatever it is, and uh, if it's Berlin, you get string. And if it's something called unbroken, you will get the uh, numerical representation. And the like, second large broken things is date I18N, which stands for date and interna internationalization. I can never pronounce it. And this is uh, built as analog and on top of PHP date function. And the main purpose of both is take a moment of, moment of time and output it for human. And uh, on surface, it's for two very different, two very similar functions, but there are a lot of difference under the hood. So date is operating in English. A WordPress version operates in WordPress current locale. A date operates in PHP time zone, which WordPress uh, will always try to reset to UTC. So if you call a native PHP function in WordPress context, there normally should be in UTC, but there are no guarantees that some plugin did not just go and change time zone. And some of them do that, and something to be aware of that it, it can, you know, works on my, my machine. But if your 
producing public code, plugins, themes, then something entirely unrelated to what you do can break time, out, time output for you. So date IATNN operates with time zone string, and notably only with time zone string. It does not support GMT offset. And date operates with Unix timestamp, and day itin n operates with what I call, there is no name for it, I call it WordPress timestamp. And WordPress documentation and inline documentation will tell you a big fat lie that that is a Unix timestamp, but it is not. And uh, the formats that uh, you use to explain which, uh, which output you want are based on date, and date uh, IATNN supports most, but not all of them. So how it works, if you want to say like, uh, output me fancy output, uh, produce me fancy output for this moment of time. So at first, uh, you provide the format, which is like a huge document that describes, so every letter has some meaning. This is for hours, this is for hours like 12 hour based, 24 hour based. You provide it with format, and then it will go look and, oh, I know what to do with these parts. And then it will go through locale, and every part of format that is localizable, WordPress will replace with its localized version. And then it will go through time zone and it will replace time zone bits with WordPress time zone. And then everything that is left will be passed to date function, right? Which makes, makes sense on the surface. You want WordPress to do what it is good at and you want date to do what it is good at. But there are big inconsistencies is because these two functions think in different time zones. So WordPress does not sync in UTC and date syncs in UTC. And this process is trying to uh, provide a single result from two bits of code that are not using time the same way. And that leads to a lot, a lot of problems in practice. So as I mentioned first is no GMT offset support. Date I18N just don't know what GMT offset is. If code runs on old WordPress version, or if the, even if the WordPress version, version of WordPress is new, but the setting is set to old mode, set to UTC plus two, it wouldn't know to, to, what to do. So for Berlin, it will, oh, I know, it should be this much for this format, and it will get replaced. And uh, if it's set to UTC plus two, then it will just pass it on to date and date has no idea what GMT offset is. It doesn't care. It only cares that your PHP is set to UTC time zone and it will just happily put uh, UTC time zone in. And uh, this is very interesting, like you can, t among developers, you can tell awareness by geography. So we're in Europe, so if it's like one or two hours for us, it's, you know, it's like, okay, it's an hour off. But for some people, it's 12 hours off. And I see questions all the time, like my time is not just a little off, like my time is in the wrong day. Because it's like off by 12 hours, you're likely shooting into like yesterday or shooting into tomorrow. Uh, so this is something to be very, very aware of because this is not something you have control over. You don't know you have control over your own server under best circumstances, but as soon as your code is out there in the wild, you don't have control, you don't have control over it. You don't have idea of what people's settings are. So then it fails with Unix timestamp. So if you provide time, which is for uh, PHP function that says, just give me timestamp from right now. If you provide it to date, it just works like noon UTC, just fine. If you provide it to date i18n, it outputs wrong result. And this is like completely contrary to what documentation says, because documentation is very explicit. You give Unix timestamp in this function, but you don't, because if you do, then it will output the UTC time, and then it will put current time zone on top of it, 
which has nothing in common with what that moment of time actually represents. So what WordPress operates with is what I refer to as WordPress timestamp, which is a sum of Unix timestamp and offset for current time zone. And it's very, very problematic because A, it's not interoperable with Unix timestamp. If you give Unix timestamp to WordPress, things break. If you take a timestamp out of WordPress and you miss this and you take not Unix, but WordPress timestamp out of WordPress and try, try to pass it to a different system, it fails as well. And uh, on conceptual level, it's like, well, if it worked at least, but the WordPress timestamp is different everywhere. The largest advantage of Unix timestamp, it's global. It doesn't change with time, with time zone. WordPress, ti uh, WordPress timestamp changes with time zone. In different, with different time zone settings, same moment in time will lead to different WordPress timestamps. And you can tell by looking, it's just a number. You can tell, you can look at the number and guess, is it a Unix timestamp? Is it a WordPress timestamp? Is it a WordPress timestamp in certain time zone? So, and in course, there is a lot of legacy logics that kind of piles up these micro adjustments to essentially start with uh, a lot of a lot of wrongness adds up to results that works most of the time. And when core works and when core functions called date i eight and n, in most cases that will pass the WordPress timestamp. So they will add this offset somewhere on the way and while date i eight and n is code to pro produce output, it will be called with WordPress timestamp, not Unix one. But if you try to reuse it in your own code and you're passing Unix timestamp in it, you're producing broken result. So, and uh, there are a lot of very varied formats. Most of them work with date i and n, but some don't. And the two that uh, most, in my experience, most often get people are C and R because they are so-called short shorthand formats. So when you tell it, give me date RFC 3339, uh, the date RFC blah, blah, blah is, is a PHP constant. So it actually contains a string with complete format. Uh, so input, input it sees is just a string and it produces output letter by letter. But C is not a constant. C is implemented on a level of, on a PHP core level. So when you give, you give C to PHP, it, oh, you mean, you actually mean that one thing, but WordPress doesn't have access to it. And when you give C to WordPress, WordPress goes, I don't know what to do with this. Like, wait, let date handle it. And when date handle is, we get same problems. We get incorrect time zone output because WordPress did not process time zone. WordPress didn't know there is a time zone in C because it's not aware of it. And we get lack of localization because again, uh, anything and uh, everything about WordPress locality did not apply. It doesn't know that there is something inside of an R that needs to be localized. So there is, a, as I mentioned, there is a GitHub repository with a pile of very scary code that fixes this to a reasonable extent and uh, the way I approached it is extending uh, uh, PHP datum objects uh, with things that uh, kind of a layer of what I call my layer of sanity around WordPress problems. So you can uh, get WordPress time zone and uh, da, 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 you can output using WordPress logic, but accounting for all the problems. So it will compensate for time zones differences. It will compensate for format differences. It will apply WordPress localization and uh, important benefits that it kind of get for free. You can change time zone. So in WordPress, you can only ever output in current uh, time zone of the blog of the site, which is something not something you always want because if you're 
like geographically located in one country, but you're producing a site for audience in a different country, then your time zone might make no, no sense to them on the front end. So this allows to adjust on the fly what your, uh, how, uh, where your output is placed in regards to time zone. So, and this is just kind of, so far had been things that happen on the fly when we provide input and output. But WordPress also stores times because naturally if we make a post, we want it to come with a time attached. This was uh, created uh, at that time. This was modified at that time. So who sees a problem with this? It doesn't know time zone. When you create a post in WordPress, there is no time zone information attached. You're storing GMT time, which WordPress uh, does store, but does not actually use pretty much ever. You need to go and look for it and ask for it if you want to operate with it. And there is like some time stored without time zone. And let's say like you came here from London, anyone from London in the room? No? Uh, so you can you say you came here from London and your notebook is in front of you sent to London time zone and you created a post and it says like 1 p.m. London time and everything is good for so far. But then you say, wait, but I'm in Berlin right now and I'm live blogging this and I want time to be accurate to Germany. And as, as soon as you change time zone in WordPress site, your output breaks because the time is still from London. The time is when that post was met in London, but time zone is now Berlin time zone. So WordPress combines time information for posts from two different sources without any meaningful connection between them. It always thinks that wherever, whenever post was made, that this is in the current time zone setting. And since uh, the setting can be freely changed, every change discards that information. And for a site with a lot of history, there might have been multiple changes over time. And you completely lose track when like this set of posts was made in that time zone, that in that time, that in that time zone. And if you try to, for any reason, to give an accurate historical record and you go by post date, then you're out of luck because that information is uh, just broken. So the logic, if you want to produce output that is not guaranteed, but uh, a little more reliable, uh, what you need to do, you try to get post date GMT from database. And unfortunately, WordPress does not guarantee that it is there. So if you look at it, it will usually be there, but there is no guarantee. So if you like set out to it, or if like code is like of a little shoddy quality, you can create posts that won't have GMT time attached. So if you are out of luck, if that information is not available, then you get post date and hope that it's still the same time zone. And then you get WordPress time zone and then you either combine the two or you take the UTC time and move it to desired time zone and then you, are, you output it to desired format. Again, pile of scary code on GitHub that does this. It will say great from post and you give it post object and it will do its utmost best as far as it can, that the time is correct. And even when there is discrepancy between time zones the post was made and current time zone, it will try to go around through GMT time. So you still end up with correct results. So to sum it up, it's unfortunate reality of current situation that WordPress gets both time storage and output very wrong. It's not really a question if you're affected by it, because you are, believe me. Uh, you are like affected ten, 10 times if you produce any public code that touches time in any way. Uh, because uh, as soon as you don't see 
the settings and you can check for the context, you just don't know anymore. You hope that it works and in base case it does, in case that nothing had changed its settings, nothing had changed settings since the post was made, and no plugin or theme had changed time zone on the flight. Under ideal circumstances, it will, it will, WordPress core will produce the correct output. But as soon as any element is out of sync, the output will be wrong. So, like to do's or best practices or sanity or call that what you, what you will, always read and use UTC time because that's what computers understand. Always convert if you need to store something, convert to UTC time. If you need to output something, convert from UTC time. Anything else will get you in trouble at some point. Been there, done there, broke things, fix things, broke things again. Still probably broken things that I wrote out there. So save a timestamp, ideally, or UTC time, or if you absolutely need to store time zone with time, use, I recommend using RFC 3339, which is very specific format, which is very hard to mess with because you can't change it. It's, uh, there is like a, a little more known uh, ISO 8601. You might have heard, heard references, but it's very wide format. So time zone is optional, like date part is optional, time part is optional. There are a lot of ways to write it that will be valid, but not have complete information. With RFC 3339, you're forced to use very specific format that has complete information. Use date time, PHP's date time to operate time, to do any computations, to do any comparisons. Never just go, I will like compare like uh, this uh, second, uh, this like hour with that hour uh, because uh, the time zones will get you, the daylight saving time will get you. So there is a bug in WordPress that at certain time you cannot publish posts because uh, time changes, time jumps back and certain moments in time happen more than once at night. So you are trying to publish posts at 1.30 a.m., which happens twice at night. And WordPress will tell you, oh, but that in the future, it hadn't happened yet. So you might want to schedule post, not publish it. And it will literally won't allow you to publish post until you reach 2 a.m. And uh, if you are interested in code side of it, and um, I, don't, I don't say that you need to drop this into everything that touches time. I drop into it, everything that touches time now, but that's my, that's my personal toy. Uh, but uh, that is as far as I got in core in addressing this. And unfortunately, the big challenge of fixing this in core is that it can be done piece by piece. So WordPress is uh, improved uh, in most areas by incremental process. There is a bug reported, the time passes, someone writes a patch, time passes, but get merged. And this gradual improvement in many areas leads to much better code quality and reliability and functionality. But the problem with time, daytime components specifically, it cannot be fixed piece by piece because as soon as you are trying to mess with one corner of it, you're because of those adjustments, of those timestamp adjustments, of those old assumptions, of difference in settings, you produce a cascade of bugs through the system. So the, whenever it happens, if it happens, uh, the only viable way is to fix it in bulk. You would essentially need to rewrite in parallel a new daytime component and at certain point of time, you would need to swap it completely, uh, which is a big challenge. And uh, so far, there is no like technical or political will to get that in shape. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to participate. There is a great selection of uh, bugs on track WordPress.org for discussion and for urging, can we please get nice things and as the rest of PHP world.
And that's all for me. Thank you for your time. Questions? Well, there is some time for questions, so fine. I'm like 45, 40, 44, sharp. So the main, uh, in regards to PHP version, uh, the like main hold up is understanding of uh, how to deal with numeric time zone, because it is hard to go from the like plus two hours to like wider context. You kind of you can't inflate this information. You can take two hours and guess that this is Europe Berlin. You don't have sufficient information. You can go backwards. You can start with Euro Berlin and narrow it down to two hours. So, and the, as I covered in the talk, as being able to tell PHP this is like plus two hours uh, and have it work is uh, PHP 5.55 5, 5 plus. So, PHP 5.5.10 5, precisely, if I remember. And I would guess there are, it is possible to work around this in like horrible and inconvenient ways. <laughs> but PHP 5.5 is what I consider the minimum to do anything like meaningful with daytime in like modern PHP. This is like the very minimum version that has uh, just necessary, not like nice to have necessary functionality to work with date and time in modern PHP code. Five five ten. No way to fix it on five two externally. That just uh, not within a technical possibility. Yeah, so uh, there was a great question at WordPress Stack Exchange. So someone wanted to use WordPress to make a, like to publish like a historical rule, like historical records. They wanted to use custom post types uh, with dates that uh, are not set into the like present or anywhere near present. They want to like go back hundreds of years ago, and they were having a lot of troubles with this and. Uh, I just, I was like, I have nothing to do on Saturday. I can answer this. <laughs> and so it took me six hours to put that answer together because there are essentially multiple limitations on how far back and how far forward you can go with WordPress. So there are limitations on PHP level that are more relaxed now, as I mentioned, give or take two billion years. On PHP level, it's mostly fine. There are limitations on SQL level, so you might provide correct input, but SQL wouldn't know to do how to deal with it. There are limitations uh, on WordPress level with uh, validation, because some dates that you will try to provide into WordPress, it will go, this does not look real, like, I, I don't want to ac accept this. There are limitations on JavaScript level, because when uh, you are providing uh, date in admin, it also has some limits. I don't remember the exact numbers. So the date range, so my, my final answer was the date range that WordPress reasonably operates in is uh, 1917 to 2038. <laughs> so this is a range that everything just works. As soon, <laughs> as soon as you try to go backwards, 
things starts to fall apart and if you go forwards you kind of hope it works but uh, like mysql behavior gets uncertain at that point like current versions of mysql uh, their spec for uh, daytime field uh, does not cover i think uh, beyond 9999 so four, four digits for year and there are some other limitations so if you are doing like more interesting, more wide range of time, you need to do this yourself. You need to save it as a custom field, preferably as a timestamp. And then, you know, have fun with calendars and, <laughs> and all of that. That's kind of, that's a special level of interesting. <laughs> and do you know how MySQL and Jason use the second? They don't. I'm not sure about uh, MySQL. I know that uh, Unix timestamp does not account for leap seconds. So for the context, we all know about uh, leap days, right? Every four years we get leap days. And there are sort of, you know, we have a formula in advance. We know like we can go forward and we know when leap day will happen and we can go backwards and we know when leap day did happen. Uh, but there are also smaller fluctuations in Earth's rotation and they are not predictable because, you know, it's a ball of stone flying through space. It's not a very precise process. <laughs> so at time, uh, scientists measure this. So I've uh, like uh, dug into a lot of trivia on Wikipedia while preparing this talk. So, you know, we went from looking at the sun and knowing it's noon, we went to a network of 50 plus atomic clocks all, all over the Earth that being averaged for timekeeping because with only one clock you get side effects from gravitation. So things escalated. <laughs> uh, and uh, our, how we measure our, our frame of reference expanded from, you know, standing on on the planet and looking, okay, there are stars around and we can like point at them to uh, triangulating our position and direction in space of the pulsars of radio signals from uh, radio emanating cosmic objects. So things like escalated a lot in there. And uh, now and then the measurement from uh, specific measurement, they need to add a second. So there is a Theoretically, they might need to remove a second that hadn't happened before, but they sometimes now and then they need to add a second. So the time we usually deal with Unix time, UTC time ignores it. Like they just decided <coughs> this would be too much. So for civil purposes, uh, leap seconds are generally ignored. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the current drift is 27 seconds. So time we use uh, in our daily life differs from like uh, scientific astronomically measured time by about 20 seconds and it keeps increasing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for being here.